Hello and um, welcome to the channel. I'm Omar and today I will review the I have to take a guess here because I don't have it in front of me right now. I'm gonna take a guess. It's very professional by the way, I know. The Oh this is difficult. Um the sixth studio album by Pink Floyd, Adam Hardmortal. <laughs> Fucking hell. Amazing intro as usual, fucking voice crack as well. Adam Hardmuller by Pink Floyd, I think it's their 6th studio album. It's their 5th studio album, there you go. 5th studio album, um, yeah, like I said. Progressive rock, experimental rock band Pink Floyd. They are of course, you know, legendary. They are one of my favorite bands, they're like, yeah, they're like right on my wall, like quite literal, so there you go, great album. So, yeah, you know, their 70s work, it's pretty fucking great, and this is the beginning of that, so do whatever what you will. You know, they weren't quite perfect yet up to this point. They had, of course, their first two albums with... I always forget that first fucking debut album, the, the Piper at the Gates of Dawn. I always forget that title, even though it's, it's, a, great, it's, it's a great fucking album title, but, you know, still... Um, then they did Saucer Fall and some like fucking soundtrack albums, I believe. Like fucking more and shit and Obscured by Clouds later on af after this and Metal. So, yeah, the band had some obscure releases here and there. And they had Uma Guma, of course, before this. So, you know, it was a very experimental, very, you know, Route rock or just a very art artsy route up until this point and this is more of a traditional progressive rock record i would say this is arguably really the first prog rock album by pink floyd because they you know they came into the 70s and um, i believe that's the other album before it were labeled psychedelic and experimental so you can make the the argument that they did start here but you know if you think that they just started at the debut and that's called, you know, that is prog rock, then, you know, that's fair too, I guess. But, you know, most people consider In the Court of the Crimson King the first prog album, which is 69. So this, you know, you can consider this one as well. Don't point your fucking ass at the camera out front. I don't hope you saw that, but, you know, it is appropriate for the video. Trying to talk about this because there's a cow's ass on the cover. So this is appropriate. But this record is everything but ass. There are some ass moments, if you know what I mean, but, you know, like this. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not exactly, you know, bad. It's, you know, it's, pre it's pretty great album. It's Pink Floyd, of course, so you can't go wrong. It's 70s Floyd. It's, like, pretty fucking great, but, um, you know, this is still the start of the decade. So, you know, they weren't quite there yet. And if I actually look at the ratings... It actually got a, a lot of low ratings. Rolling Stone gave it a one star. Damn. They really hated this album. All Music gave it three stars. Chris Gaw gave it D, uh, D plus. Daily Telegraph gave it two stars. Music Hound gave it a two out of five. Damn. Classic Rock gave it three and a half. So people were definitely mixed on this album. Yeah, there, there's no... There's not one person that gave this album a good rating, so everyone is kind of like on the fence with this album. I don't think it's good, you know, I have Pink Floyd bias, so of course I'm gonna give it a high rating, you know, you know me. Um, we have the first song, which is, uh, is, which is the title track, which is basically just, you know, a six part suite. Father Shout, Breast Milky, Mothers 4, Funky Dung, and, uh, or Mind Your... Throats, please. And uh, re Remergence. So this is a pretty, just really epic, or epic, a really long, really lengthy opening track. It's a title track. Wordless vocals by John, John Aldous uh, Choir. So John Aldous Choir is like the, the bloke that like eats and shit and, you know, has his breakfast. Or, wait, wait, no, I'm confusing this track with the final track, N never mind. But, uh, yeah, there you go. That's kind of it, honestly. This is a pretty epic track. I kind of let this speak uh, speak one for itself. It's literally half of the record, this, this song alone, so... 
You know what I watch well? This is a pretty grand song, a lot of like things going on there. Um, I think personally how we can interpret it the best way is that, you know, Pink Floyd is consuming the meal, you know, uh, or how do you say that? They are like making the food on this track, Autumn Heart Mother, like how it's going and shit. Breast Milky, Mother 4, Funky Dung. Oh well, this doesn't make any sense, no, never mind. But um, another thing that this track is pretty, you know, it's just a journey in a way. It does have this like floss and shit, and it is kind of noisy in a way. But if you get into it, it is uh, one hell of a one hell of a title track. So there you go. So you know, I think this track is kind of like the blueprint, or like they're making the breakfast because this album is kind of is conceptually a breakfast album. I don't know, but maybe you know, figure it out. I don't think it is, but whatever. Uh, then we have "If," which is actually written and sung by. Roger Waters, I think this track is very, you know, straightforward and just very pleasant and especially after such an epic or just such a lengthy title track, it's definitely nice to have some like breaks here and there before like the, the closing track, so there you go. Nice pleasant opening track for Side Through, really enjoyed it, Waters is a great songwriter. I'm not a huge fan of his vocals necessarily, but I don't mind them either way, so there you go. Now we have a song written by Richard Wright, and I see what they did there, you know, uh, they wrote it uh, one song each, except for Nick Mason. Uh, he co-wrote it, the, the till ends, the two epics of the record, but he didn't, you know, solely write them. It wouldn't surprise me if he would write this fucking psychedelic breakfast song. I mean, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't surprise me in a way, you know, the Ringo of the fucking... Of Pink Floyd, so there you go. You know, he is the drummer, so it's fucking perfect. Uh, Summer 68, there's like a big missed opportunity here, you know, because fucking, uh, you know, 69, yeah, I know, I'm immature, fucking all. 5 minutes 29, this is kind of similar to the Gilmore song, uh, very key heavy, just very, you know, uh, in that Richard Wright written way. Try to say that fucking five times. 550 times, whatever. Yeah, this is a pretty epic track. I do really enjoy the synths on there. I do really enjoy the instrumentation too. Uh, Richard Rodgers is a great songwriter, so I do definitely enjoy his songwriting department in, you know, him writing about uh, having a good summer in 68. I'm not sure if he's gonna go the way of, you know, that other bloke that wrote the song about it a year later. But um, I definitely think it's a good song and it definitely fucking beats that song, if you know what I mean. Fucking no. Then we have Fat Old Sun, and this is a pretty blunt song. This is pretty straightforward, kind of direct in a way. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that, but you know, you do get uh, faster to the uh, to the meat and potatoes of the album. If you know what I mean? You get faster to the point. It's more conf uh, confront. It's more direct. But at the same time, this is kind of a vague, weird album. So maybe you're not listening to the right album, I guess. But it does, you know, it does mix up the album pretty well. I do think that, you know, um, it just mixes pretty well, I think. So there you go. It, it is probably one of, one of my favorites because it's one of the, it's a very diverse song. I think it changes a lot of, of things. So it definitely gets a favorite for mine. So there you go. And then we have the final track, which is kind of infamous in a way. And personally, I'm kind of mixed on this song. Uh, yeah, I think really only this song and maybe uh, the the title track is one of my favorite because it does so much right, but it's not perfect. So there you go. But it is probably my favorite of the album if that makes sense. So in a way, it is my favorite, but it's also my least favorite because it does the most things wrong and right. But yeah, that's kind of it honestly. Hard to explain, but that's there you go. Yeah, now we have the most infamous song of this album, and you know, if people want to call this one of the worst Pink Floyd songs ever, then I get that. It's, this is kind of one of those songs that, you know, is fucking... Uh, it, it's kind of like that really long title from Uma Guma, like a bunch of small animals gathered in like um, a fucking tree, humping the shit out of each other, like that title or whatever, you know. Uh, it's not that long, as in the title isn't that long, but it's kind of absurd that way. You don't, like, you don't hear the fucking, you know, gorillas and the fucking crazy animals go wild, you know. 
So that's another thing, but you can literally hear a guy rise and shine as soon as side up morning glory. So yeah, you can definitely fucking, um, or well, it starts off with this guy waking up and fucking, you know, preparing breakfast for himself, this fucking speech by Alan Styles. So Alan Styles is, you know, the guy that eats on this album. He eats and drinks and bakes some more and shit like that. And he just consumes it. There's some nice, like, you know, fucking instrumentation going on going on with the later song or the later parts such as Sunny Side Up and Morning Glory but the first fucking rise and shine is literally just him eating so I'm really mixed on the song personally I'm not sure if I have a least favorite of this album um yeah I, I think I think this is my least favorite of the album because it is kind of like the room quality is all bad as in it's literally just the guy taking a fucking breakfast and they recorded that for an album. That's literally it. You know, Pink Floyd is a fucking... They are a great band because they influenced ASMR channels. I'm not fucking joking here. They are, they are the first fucking ASMR channel. Put to fucking tape. You can listen to this shit. This is ASMR shit. So, there you go. Um, yeah, you know, Pink Floyd are truly innovators in everything, so there you go. Uh, and since I love ASMR channels so much, this is truly a favorite of mine. So, yeah, this is definitely a great song. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, it's kind of fuck all, so, you know. You know. Um, yeah, I, you know, it, it's not bad, but it's just like, why have this on air, like, really? Like, you could have spent, you know, the, the fucking first six, seven minutes doing something or whatever, but they're literally just, like, eating breakfast, so... You know, I wouldn't say it's a terrible track because it's funny, it's kind of, like... It's kind of one of those tracks that is so bad that it's good in a way, like The Room or something. So it's kind of in that ballpark, I would say. But there is something like pleasant to look at um you know or that there's something pleasant about the song as in you know imagining a nice breakfast for yourself like very quiet and nice and shit so the song definitely kind of relaxes me because you know s some like british bloke is having breakfast which really like calms me for some reason because it sounds really fucking fancy and really uh, calm it's, it really calms me but at the same time, it's not a fucking track, so, you know, I'm kind of split on this song, but I would say, I, I would still say it's, it's the least favorite of mine, because is it really a song? It's really just a fucking glorified breakfast, so that's kind of it, honestly, it's a fucking bird. So, there you go, I mean, the whole band wrote it, this fucking song, and I mean, literally just one guy is, like, having a meal. So, probably the fucking, you know, whenever they were... Uh, each other, whenever they were together and they were like what is a good idea for a final track oh yeah let's just let this one narrator do the fucking um, you know have have him do the breakfast and they came all up with that idea in the same fucking moment they came all up with that idea in the same moment and then they were like yeah let's do that and then they credited it, you know everyone was credited because everyone came up with that idea I mean, I don't get this song, like, for, like every Pink Floyd member is credited as they wrote it, and you even have an instrumental speech by Alan Styles on there, so, like, I don't, what, why does this song have four writers, four of the greatest musicians ever, you know, you know, I love Nick Mason, so, I think he's a great drummer, so, definitely one of the all times. Um, yeah, so, you know, I don't get this song. I think you know that by now, so that's my least favorite. I don't think it's terrible, and I think this is still a really good album. I think the, you know, the title track is epic. <clears throat> if is very pleasant, very cool. Uh, reminds me of uh, fucking... I listened to Damnation before this, Opeth, so definitely reminds me of that. Even though, you know, Opeth is, Opeth is influenced by Pink Floyd, of course, so there you go. Summer 68 was, you know, not a favorite of mine, but it's still good, I think. Uh, Fettled Sun was uh, pretty blunt and pretty, you know, direct, which is not a bad thing, so I do like that as well. 
And you know, add on psychedelic to breakfast. It's funny, it's funny in a room way, but it's not necessarily a great track. Is it even a track? You know, you know, I'll let you guys decide. You know, I can't fucking decide this shit, so uh, you guys can decide for your own. That's a review. Um, yeah, I still really like the song. I still like every song in a way because it's you know it calms me or it, you know makes me relaxed. Pink Floyd in general just makes me very relaxed to listen to them. So I definitely still uh, really like this album. I still think it's pretty great. So I'm gonna give this album an 8.8. .8. If only that fucking um, if only Alan's psychedelic breakfast was like altered or something, or they did more on that song. Maybe I would have liked it, or you know just completely cut it. I, I don't fucking know. Something do something about it, but outside of that, I think the album is pretty perfect. And Summer 68 was kind of, you know, it's good, but I prefer Waters and Gilmore riding, so there you go, that's kind of an honest beat. Um, there you go, I still think it's very good, and I mean, I'm biased as fuck, so I'm gonna, gonna give it a high rating. So, there you go, Pink Floyd, uh, one of the greatest bands ever, so you know them by now, probably. Ch definitely check this album out, I think it's pretty good. If you want to listen to some nice, relaxed, like, prog rock music, not necessarily fully developed prog, prog music like, you know, let's say a fucking Yes or a King Crimson. But more, you know, more nuanced or more chill, relaxed, more down to earth, I would say. None of those bands are like the hard to get, you know. But they're a bit more complex, I would say. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because I prefer Pink Floyd over both of them because of their simplicity. So, do whatever what you will. I love prog, but you know. If you can make prop music and it's catchy, that is some powerful material right there. So, you know, again, not to say that those bands aren't catchy, but it's difficult. You know, it's a bit more complex, it's a bit more difficult, so you get me, you know, so there you go. Um, thank you for watching this video, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and if you like this one, let me know what you think about this album in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.